Kia ora and welcome to Baha'i On Air. My name is Miley Doherty and today I have with me Dr. Laura Hedayati, a child psychologist from Australia. Welcome back to New Zealand, Laura. Thank you, Miley. It's good to be here. So why have you come to New Zealand at this time? Well, about five years ago, my husband and I moved to Australia just to experience something different. And the deal, the deal for me leaving New Zealand was we come back at least once a year to just visit our family and friends. So every summer, like homing pigeons, we come back. And this summer we were able to coincide with the Baha'i Summer School. So that's why we're here today. So I understand that you've been given the opportunity to give some workshops at the Summer School this year. I know, what a fantastic opportunity to be able to talk about something you're passionate about. But when I decided to come to the Summer School and was kind of talking to the organising committee, they asked if I'd do a workshop on parenting. And that's one of my loves. How we can strengthen marriages, strengthen families, strengthen parents is something that's very dear to my heart. So I jumped at the chance and was able to deliver two workshops on spiritual parenting, which is something that I feel very strongly about. So in your work, in your clinical work, mm -hmm. um, is this part of how you approach your, um, your patients or your, the children that you deal with, looking at their spiritual as well as, well as their physical Oh, self. yeah. Well, that, look, that's a, that's a story. When, when I was thinking about how my place in the world and what I wanted to do as a career, I knew it wanted to be something to do with people, to be working with people and making a difference. And when I went to university, I got very interested in psychology. And interestingly, psychology comes from the word psyche, which means spirit. Though, I have to confess that in 10 years of training, I didn't, we didn't really talk too much about the spirit. And in fact, if you mention the spirit, you're kind of out there a little bit. So it's really heartening to actually see psychology actually start acknowledging the importance of, whole, of the whole person and the spirit. So when I was studying psychology, I realized how important it was that we look at how we build, how we build young people rather than the other end of the spectrum, which is working with people who've had lots of difficulties in their life. And you're looking more at, at repair. And I wanted to put my energies into more prevention. And another, something else that's incredibly dear to my heart is my love of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i Faith. And I'm a Baha'i, and I was raised as a Baha'i child. So my parents had always brought me up to have a love for all of humanity and a recognition that Every, every member of the human family is special and has something to offer. So I wanted to combine my, my love for others and my desire to be part of something that make, moves humanity forward. And also what I was realizing at university was psychology. And child clinical psychology, which, which is what I specialized in, brought it all together beautifully. And when I, when I was putting together the workshop, here, um, I was really guided by a letter that as the Baha'i world community had received from the Universal House of Justice. And the Universal House of Justice for Baha'is around the world is the international administrative body that, that provides guidance for the community about the directions they should be heading in. And there was a paragraph in the letter in 2000 that really struck me that said that children are the most precious treasure that a community can possess. For in them is the seeds of the future. And it's how we treat children that is our inheritance as adults. And so when I was doing this, the spiritual parenting workshops with um, the people who were participating in the summer school, we focused a lot on how we as parents or how we as adults who have contact with children can bring out the best in children. And it also was drawing from the Baha'i writings is a wonderful quote by Abdul Baha, who is the son of Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith. And Abdul Baha said to regard man as a mine rich in gems of an estimable value. And if you can imagine that we're all like this mine and inside us is these glittering gems. And we talked in the workshop about how those are the virtues within us, the virtues of love and caring and compassion. But just like the miner who has to chip them out of the rock, we have to nurture them within ourselves and help our children to draw them forth. And so it was really exciting to be with this dynamic and incredibly diverse group of people because the Baha'i community 
draws from all sections of society, from all socioeconomic levels, from all levels of educational background. It truly lives the unity and diversity to be able to hear that collective wisdom of, of people who are striving to make a difference in the lives of children. So as a mother yes. and as a Baha'i, yes. and now as an educator yes. as well, yes. what do you think that some of the things that us as mothers can do to really um, mine those gems in our children? Oh look, I think we've got such a, um, a lofty position as mothers and in fact it, I'll tell you a little story when I left and I hope, I hope my boss doesn't mind this when I left my position as a clinical psychologist and I was working for a specialist service in Auckland so it was a pretty high-powered job and when I left and I said I was I was gonna be at home my boss said to me Laura what are you gonna do I said what do you mean Mike what are, I'm gonna mother <laughs> and and I think that that recognition of of mothering, of parenting the next generation as being of utmost importance is, is something that we really as a society need to, to walk the talk, that we actually need to recognise that parenting, um, our precious trust, our children, is a fundamental important job in and of itself. Not at all to say that we can't combine it with others, but that we need to give it the utmost attention and that if we really believe that children are that precious trust, that we don't, we don't sideline them. And, and as a Baha'i, um, our writings tell us that, that mothers are the first educators of the children and that we have such an important role to play in how we set the family culture. And so for me as, as a mother, I, I really want to encourage other mothers to, to recognise that important role that they play in, in the lives of their family. So as a mother, as the first educator, mm -hmm. can you describe the different types of education that you might be trying so hard to sort of bring to your children? Mm -hmm. Look, I think that society puts so much emphasis on the more humanistic education of our children. We want to socialise them and in what it means to be a child of our culture and the kind of tools that they need to live a life that we feel is successful in this culture. And I think that's really important. But what I think is really a light upon a light is when we give our children a very solid sense of a place to stand in our culture and also a very solid sense of their importance as a spiritual being because I really believe as a Baha'i that we are all children of, of one God. Um, call that God Lord, call that God an unknowable essence, but that we were all children of that one God and that God has given us a spirit and the components of that spirit are these are gems or virtues and that as a mother, as a parent, I want to draw forth from my children whatever their capacity may be. And that capacity, they may have specific talents and gifts that will be of service to the world, but also their spiritual capacity, the, the, the gifts that they take with them forever. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we have these terms, virtues. Yes. There's also this term, values. And yes. sometimes we use them interchangeably. And I remember yes. someone saying once that a virtue is that universal thing. Yes. And the value is the value that a particular culture might put yes. on how important it is to be patient or how important it is to be yes. tactful, for instance. Yes. Um, so being a New Zealander, mm -hmm. can you see there are certain virtues that we, we quite highly prize in this culture and others that maybe we need to work a little harder to, to bring forward in our families? Uh, look, I think that... New Zealanders are, are, have a very much a can-do attitude mm. and I think that's absolutely wonderful and I think that that enthusiasm and love of life, I think we're just blessed by beauty mm. and appreciation of nature and beauty and I think that's wonderful and I think in many ways New Zealand um, leads the world in really forming a more integrated society where I think people, or I'd like to think people of all cultures 
feel valued. And I say, let's keep doing it. That we're not, we're not at a place yet where I think we can sit back and think that um, we have that truly enriching society where people from all cultures and we from people from all walks of life feel accepted and cared for and part of our culture. And so I think we need to continue to lead the way in being a society that prizes the capacities that everybody has and can make room for everybody. And in, in the Baha'i writings, there's often that, um, that sentence, unity and diversity, and really, really make that our watchword, that we have unity within the diversity of all the wonderful cultures that have come to this fantastic place. Mm. So here at the New Zealand Baha'i Summer School, you've mm -hmm. been are giving um, a series of workshops on yes. spiritual parenting. Yes. Would you like to just give us a few of the, maybe the key elements from that workshop and share um, with the, the um, Baha'i on Air viewers some things that you had brought out in that workshop? Sure. I think primarily the first important thing is that our children are, are precious, absolutely precious, and the role of parenting is to be prized. And I think that we all share a spiritual capacity and that that capacity is there untapped and that we need to actually draw forth all the capacity that lies within us all and that it's our onward journey that we as as adults take responsibility for the the journey that we're on when we are parents to our children we must initially help them and bring them forward to the point where then they take over and so within the workshop was really emphasizing that important role we have in nurturing the spirit of our child and helping them to, if, if, you, if you will, sort of train the mirror of their, of their spirit on, on lofty ideals and high expectations so they can be of benefit to the world, um, that they can work together to make the world a better place. So practically speaking, mm -hmm. I understand that one might say there's like the language of the virtues, there's certain yes. things that you can say, ways in which you can express the virtues yes. to children yes. that helps that child to understand or to really, for their spirit to hear the virtue. Yes. Could you yes. maybe give us some examples of those? A program that I found really useful and actually I, I trained in it when I was working as a clinical psychologist in, um, in Auckland is the Virtues Project. Now this project is Baha'i inspired and it was um, put together by a child clinical psychologist and a child psychotherapist who were really concerned about what they saw was an alienation of young people from, from society, a real lack of connection. And as a result of that, that lack of connection, behaviours that were, were hurtful to society. And they recognised what, are the, what, what draws everybody together, and it's the spirit. And what is the building blocks of our spirit? They felt it was the virtues. And so they put together the Virtues Project, which is five strategies. And the first strategy is to recognize that we all have virtues within us, and that language is so powerful to use to encourage people to know that they have virtues. So for example, when we, when we talk to people, rather than having language that is very disempowering and discouraging, we use our language to encourage, to, to um, encourage people in acts of service or acts of caring or generosity or sharing. So it reinforces and builds people's spirit. It's also about recognizing that, that there are multiple, especially for parents, but, but for the way we interact with people, there are multiple what they call teachable moments where we can acknowledge for people the specialness we see within them. And the third strategy is recognizing that the need for people to have a sense of safety and belonging within parameters, within boundaries, and that these especially are really important for our children, that we set boundaries that are appropriate and that are in service to their learning and their growth and, and help them feel safe. And if we think as adults, you imagine a world where there were no appropriate boundaries and we didn't know what, looked, what was okay and what was not okay. Our children need that too. And the fourth strategy is about honouring the spirit, recognising the sacred, the spirit within everybody and, and acknowledging it so people really feel they're, they're listened to and, and they're heard and, and there's a connection. Because I think one of the things that really is lacking in, in our society is people feeling they're part of something, that they're connected to others, that they matter, they're significant. And the final strategy of the Virtues Project is about the 
the um, spiritual companioning, and, and different philosophies call it empathic listening or reflective listening, but it's a way of really listening to people in times of trouble and in times of need in a way that helps them to access the solution, the wisdom within them. And so the strategies of the Virtues Project were also dealt with in the workshop that I presented, but I also use those strategies a lot in, in my life back in Australia when I, I actually work a lot with um, teaching of, of Baha'i education in the local schools that within, certainly in New South Wales where I live, there's the, the um, place in the weekly curriculum for religions to offer for half an hour, 45 minutes, their, their faith. And the Baha'i faith has been asked by many schools to also offer the Baha'i faith as, as an opportunity for their children to, to learn about the Baha'i faith. And, and certainly in my area where I live, it's been very attractive to, for parents. And we're a small Baha'i community, but we have coming to Baha'i education classes over 100 children, which is, which is pretty big. And I think that what appeals is parents really want their children to have a sense of faiths that are, I guess it's preparing their children for the bigger world and recognizing their children may not live in Australia or they may not grow up in, or they may not live in New Zealand forever. And if they want to travel to Thailand or Siberia, that there are different faiths there, there are different cultures. And one of the basic teachings of the Baha'i faith is that all religions come from God. And that all religion, whether you're Christian, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Hindu, that you are following the teachings of the one God. And I think that's actually been very attractive to the parents of, of the children. We're, we're not saying to them, this is right and you're, and you're wrong. It's saying, but we're all right. You know, we're all following the teachings of the one God. In case you just joined us, this is Baha'i On Air. We are interviewing Dr. Laura Hedayati, a child psychologist from Australia who is in New Zealand visiting at the Baha'i Summer School. Now, Laura, you were just speaking about your work with Baha'i um, curriculum in the state school system in Australia. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, I understand that there's also a program of um, Baha'i education for children that's being run in neighbourhoods really all throughout the world, both also in Australia and in New Zealand. Are you involved in this as well? Oh, absolutely. The Universal House of Justice, which I mentioned previously, is the administrative body for the worldwide Baha'i community, gives guidance to the Baha'i community about areas to put effort and energy. The four core activities, areas such as children's classes, is one core activity, and junior youth, is another core activity and devotional meetings is the third core activity and being a culture of, of learning what's called study circles an ongoing deepening of one's knowledge of sacred writings these form the four core activities that the Baha'i communities worldwide are putting their energy into and one of them is children's classes and I guess it's a, it's a real desire on the world by Baha'i community to develop communities that are spiritually strong, that are places of joy for everybody, that, are, that where people feel that their energy, that their, their capacity is, is tapped into. And for us and where I live and where I'm involved, it's, it's really being part of children's classes, which we call brilliant stars, because we feel our children are brilliant stars. And we offer for our for children in the community, and that's any child, the opportunity to come together to, to learn about the Baha'i faith, to learn about their special, the special place that they occupy as, as a special little person, to, to learn about their virtues within, and, and to come together to develop tools to be a peacemaker, because really the future of our world depends upon the education that we give our young people to be able to build a world of peace and unity to bring people together and, and they can show us the way and so I'm very involved in that. And you run this with your own children as well? With my own children, with their friends, from other children in the community and, and it's growing and I think the, re the reason it's growing reflects a real need in our community to feed the spirit, to feed the soul and I think that 
we're becoming more aware that we're not just physical beings, but we also have a spirit and we need to nurture that. And I think that's also one of the reasons why the attendance, people coming along to our devotional prayers, where we read from Baha'i um, writings, we also read from the writings of other sacred faiths, because it feeds our soul. It, it elevates our spirit. And we have beautiful readings at this time, we might have music, and it's just a way of nourishing that spirit. So you have three children. I do. And so this is part of the spiritual life of your, of your home life, you might, yes. might say? Oh, very much so. I think that the opportunity to get together with like-minded people, with, with children from literally, I, I mean, at this summer school, I think we come from, we hail from every continent of the world. Um, just that opportunity to see the children, black, white, red, and tan, just come, I mean, you can hear the sounds of them out there laughing and running around. It's, it's, it's a gift. It's a real gift to give your children these happy memories of fellowship, of friendship. And so I know when I was growing up as a Baha'i child, coming to summer school, coming to a, a Baha'i event was, was a highlight. It was something we looked forward to. It's where we made the friends that I come here today and I'm, I'm back with my, my far now, my family who now have their own children. And yet we were children together way back when, not that far back. So, so your parents were the first people in your family to become Baha'i? Look, they were. My, my dad was raised Jewish. Yes, he was, a, he was a Los Angeles Jew, and my mother was raised Christian, and when they decided to marry, and I guess in a way it's probably good they weren't Baha'is at the time, because one of the basic teachings of the Baha'i faith is that marriage unites families, and in order to ensure that, that a marriage has the full support and nurture and encouragement of all families, you seek the parental, the parental consent. Well, when my father married my Christian mother, and it's not to speak disparagingly of my grandparents at all, who are lovely people. But my Jewish father marrying my Christian mother was the first marriage of my Jewish father's family to a non-Jew. And to say that it put the cat among the pigeons would be an understatement. So it, it was a bit of, a, a bit of a, an adjustment for them. And when I was very much still a babe, they, they immigrated to New Zealand and met the Baha'i faith. And for my father especially, who became a Baha'i first, it was really the fulfillment of a dream, a dream he had that, that humanity could come together, that religions brought humanity together, because that had not been his personal experience. And so he very quickly accepted that the teachings of Baha'u'llah are about the oneness of humanity, about the oneness of religion, um, and the oneness of God, the, the creative essence that, that um, created us all. It just touched his heart, and, and it was really what he'd been looking for. And my, my, mother, my mother followed very soon after. So I was, I was really lucky to be given the bounty of being raised in a Baha'i family. And, and for my brothers and sisters, we were kind of a large tribe of, of children who really, I think, reveled in being, being able to see that for, for our Jewish cousins and our Christian cousins, it was... It was all one big family of God. And for us, it was never a distinction that, that, oh, you're Jewish, you're Christian. It's like, we're all children of one God. And when I married, I, I married a wonderful man, Ephon, and, and Ephon's family were originally Muslim. And so for my, for my father, who's, who has children now, who are various children are married, and they've married kind of the United Nations, you know, he has grandchildren who span all sorts of races. <laughs> And it's wonderful, you know, he's got the blue-eyed blonde, he's got the dark brown-eyed straight hair, he's got the dark brown-eyed curly hair, he's got the freckles, he's got the lot. And he loves it. <laughs> and so you grew up a Baha'i? Yes, I did. And at some point you would have needed to decide whether or not this religion was for you? That's true. Baha'u'llah writes that, that 15 is the age of spiritual maturity. And that's the time when you take responsibility for your spiritual journey, that, that your parents have done what they can and you're now responsible. And I gave it some thought, uh, just because you are raised a Baha'i does not mean you automatically become a Baha'i youth. But for me, there never was a, it's like this is so obvious to me, that the world needs the teachings of Baha'u'llah, that we need that divine educator, which all the messengers of God have been, to educate the human spirit to come together 
in love and unity. And that left to our own devices, without the guidance of a spiritual educator from God, that speaks with the authority of God, that we fall into chaos, into disunity, which is what we see in the greater world. And, and for me, the recognition that Baha'u'llah was the promised one of all ages, the promised one of all religions, and that brings the teachings that, that speak to humanity's heart, that will bring us together, was self-evident. And, and it was no, there was, there was never a time when I had a doubt. I, I, I just, I saw it too much in action, you know, that, that in my own family, you know, the, the Baha'i, the, the Jewish mother, um, Jewish father, the Christian mother, the, the, the friends that we welcomed to our family. Because when I was growing up, our family was, our family home was open to everybody. And I know that that really came from my parents' beliefs as Baha'is, you know, that we're members of all one family. And so, yeah, it was all self-evident. It seems that you have this wonderful life. You've managed to find a faith that you love, yes. a profession that you love, yes. a wonderful, wonderful family mm. that you love. I must mention my children. Oh, of course. Yes, I, I'm really, look, I'm really blessed. I have three children. And it's funny, you know, I went into parenting and I'm this trained clinical psychologist, you know, I've been working with parents, I've been doing parenting courses, I've been working with child clinical psychology for years. And then you get this newborn babe and they don't respond to the way the book said they should. <laughs> but look, it's been, it's been wonderful having children. Um, it's been a wonderful learning curve for me. It's really, it's brought joy to my heart to be able to be part of um, rearing the next generation and, and F1, my husband and I are blessed with an eight-year-old, Ethan, and a six-year-old daughter, Gemma, and a four-year-old boy, Justin. So they've joined me to here at the summer school and they're out there having a wonderful time. Well, so Laura, it's been so wonderful having you here on Bahamai On Air. We've been speaking to Dr. Laura Hedayati, a child psychologist who's a New Zealander, but currently resides in New South Wales and Australia. Thank you so much for joining us here on Baha'i On Air. Make sure you tune in next time when we will also be discussing another topic from the Baha'i faith.